So that last candidate's idea sounded pretty familiar, right? Consumers and producers negotiating prices based on supply and demand in the market. Sounds a lot like you and your lemonade stand. I can see how that would feel pretty comfortable for you because it's similar to what you've experienced before. Well, that's a fair point. What if there's a better system out there? Let's dive into the next candidate and see what his proposal looks like. Meet Commander Carl, a former military leader. He is extremely organized and an excellent leader, always keen on a plan, this guy. If the last candidate we looked at was all about letting the market control the economy, Commander Carl is all about putting the power in the hands of the government. In other words, Commander Carl is proposing a command economy. A command economy is a system where the government dictates economic decisions with little input from consumers or producers. Let's check on those three basic questions. Who decides what to produce? That's right, the government. For example, in the village of Communaville, leaders collaborate with villagers. After discussing with the villagers, they decide that this year there's a need for warm blankets, sturdy shoes, and wooden furniture. While this means there's limited variety, it ensures that everyone's basic needs are addressed. On the bright side, with everyone focused on these items, there's shared expertise and collaboration. Who decides how to produce it? Again, the government. In Communaville, the methods of production are collectively agreed upon. On the upside, since everyone uses the same methods, quality is ensured, and there's a shared sense of pride in their craftsmanship. The downside? If someone has a new, potentially better technique, it might be challenging to introduce it to the community. Who decides for whom to produce? You got it! It's the government again. In Communaville, there's no need for advertising or competition. Instead, the leaders, with input from the villagers, distribute the goods based on needs. This ensures everyone has a fair share. The advantage? No one feels left out or lacks essential items. The potential downside? If someone desires more than their share or has specific preferences, they might feel their desires aren't fully met. Yes, that is why we call it a command economy. The government is in command, for sure. In a command economy, governments usually own the company's resources and the means to distribute goods and services. Let's pause here for a moment and consider how the people of Communaville benefit from their command economy. Pause the video and record your thoughts. Why does the government make these decisions? Well, the idea is that by controlling the economy, the government can provide the greatest benefit to all citizens, rather than focusing on individual or business profits. That sounds great, but the actual choices made by the government depend on the political processes in that government. There are governments who choose a command economy on a long-term basis. Authoritarian governments are the most likely to implement a command economy. Good question, Mia! An authoritarian government is a political system characterized by centralized power, limited political freedoms, and strong government control, often with a single leader or a small ruling elite exercising significant authority. Why do you think authoritarian governments would be the most likely type to choose command economies? 
Well, the power is already centralized in the hands of the authoritarian government, so the system is already set up to make it easy for the government to control what happens in the economy as well. One good example of this was the former Soviet Union. But there are definitely also times when a democratic government might move to a command economy, at least temporarily. Can you think of any reason why it might be advantageous for the government to temporarily take control of the economy? Well, one possible reason is efficiency. In times of crises like war, it may be necessary to change production quickly in order to make more weapons and supplies to support the war effort. Having someone like Commander Carl around at that time would definitely come in handy. So, what is the impact of a command economy on the stakeholders? What would it mean for Mia, her business, and the people in her community if Commander Carl implemented his plan for a command economy? Pause the video to try to predict some of the potential impacts of command economies. Well, on the plus side, command economies can quickly adapt when needed, like during wartime. They can change what is produced quickly and provide all available resources. Since they control production and distribution, command economies can ensure that all citizens benefit fairly from the nation's economic output. They can also provide goods that might not be super profitable. For example, in a command economy, the government may prioritize providing affordable and widespread public transportation services, even if they are not highly profitable. This ensures that citizens have access to transportation options and provides benefits such as economic savings, pollution reduction, and reduced congestion in cities. They could also invest in healthcare infrastructure to provide affordable or free healthcare services to all citizens, regardless of their ability to pay. This includes preventative care and treatments for common illnesses, which may not generate significant profits for private healthcare providers. That does sound pretty good, and it certainly works well in Communiville, like we discussed with Tom TradyCon and the traditional economy, this kind of system, at least in its pure form, might work better on a smaller scale, like in a village community. But there are some pretty big challenges that go along with a command economy as well. For example, the government may not always know right away what consumers really want or need, so they may be slower to adjust based on market demand, which may leave a lot of unsatisfied consumers. Imagine if the government decided everyone in Miaville should have unicorns. Would that be cool or would it just be chaotic? Also, a command economy can create an incentive problem. What do I mean by that? Well, consider the market system. What is the primary incentive for producers in that system? It's the profit motive, right? We talked a lot about how the profit motive can incentivize producers to innovate and work hard to create better products more efficiently. What happens to that incentive if the government owns and controls all the businesses and production? It can disappear. After all, why would you push yourself to work extra hard if you knew your job was secure, your paycheck was guaranteed, and your business was backed by the government? Rather than incentivizing efficiency and innovation, a true command economy can actually discourage them over time, and there are no entrepreneurs to help drive things forward by taking economic risks. Finally, what do you think tends to happen anytime you concentrate too much power in the hands of a few? There is a significant risk of corruption or the abuse of power or position for personal gain. That can lead to the rich getting richer and the poor poorer, causing greater economic inequality. 
If corruption takes root in a command economy, it can spell trouble in various ways. First off, it disrupts how resources are used because decisions are no longer based on what's best for the economy, but on personal gain. This leads to inefficiencies and wasted resources. Second, public services like healthcare and education can actually end up suffering because funds meant for them can vanish into corrupt pockets. People lose trust in the government, which can spark protests and even political turmoil. Before we move on, pause the video and refine your prediction from the beginning of the section. Okay, let's take a moment to look back on what we've learned. What kind of economy is Commander Carl proposing, and how would it impact the people of Miaville? In a command economy, the government takes the lead in determining what to produce, how to produce it, and for whom to produce. In essence, the government is in command. Not only does the government decide on production, but it usually owns the companies and resources and controls how goods and services are distributed. The ideal behind this approach is that the government can ensure the well-being of all its citizens and the greatest benefit to all. However, the actual decisions and efficiency depend on the political processes within that government. Many people see these as the benefits of a command economy rapid adaptability, fair distribution of resources, and the provision of essential services for all. Challenges of a command economy include being less responsive to consumer demands, reduced incentives for innovation and efficiency, and a high potential for corruption and abuse of power. With all this in mind, Mia will have to consider, would Commander Carl's plan provide long-term benefits or would the potential pitfalls overshadow the good? Tomorrow, we will look at the last candidate who is proposing something called a mixed economy. Until then, this is B reminding you to keep investing in your future one lesson at a time. I'll see you next time. Hey, hey.